Hey, this is Corey from Wolfpack Woodcraft, and this is the second video of 10 things you are going to need to start camping. The first 10 items that I did before were essential. Those are things that you are going to need to go camping. And if you have those 10 items, you will be able to go camping and experience it at its fullest. These 10 items that I have for you today are more comfort items. These are things that are going to allow you to be a lot more comfortable and enjoy your trip even further. Uh, also, these typically be the things that are forgotten. People either forget to pack them, they forget to add them to the list. These are the things that usually get overseen. And so I wanted to put them in their own list, in their own video. And so starting off, the very first thing is bug spray and sunblock. And so here I have a lot of different bug sprays and sunblock. When it comes to sunblock, the SPF, I try to have a minimum of SPF 30. This is SPF 50. This is what I prefer. The higher the number, the more protection it's going to offer. And when you are out camping and you're spending all day, every day in the sun, you are exposing yourself to sunburn. And being sunburnt while you're camping is miserable because not only are you sunburnt from the day before, but now you're spending another day with the sun shining on that burn. And so if you can prevent it in the first place, that is a much better way of spending your weekend or your couple days out than being burnt and miserable the whole time. Uh, the other thing is bug spray. Uh, you're gonna encounter a lot of different bugs. The two that I worry about the most are mosquitoes and ticks. Now living in Minnesota, the land of 10,000 lakes, means that 10,000 lakes equals 10 bajillion mosquitoes. And so for me, I use DEET. Uh, I prefer Maxi DEET, Sawyer Maxi DEET, or Repel 100. Uh, I think they're exactly the same formula, it's just packaged different. The difference between the two for me is they go on sale at different times. And so I just pick up whichever one is cheaper. They seem to work pretty close to the same, if not exactly the same. So I just pick up whichever one is cheaper. I'll leave links to all this stuff in the description box down below if you're interested in those. When it comes to ticks, I use permethrin. And so this is Sawyer permethrin. I already got the spray bottle on it or the spray attachment on it. And this you have to plan in advance. And so before you go camping, before you do what you need to do, you're going to spray down your clothes, your sleeping bag, your tent, uh, whatever you don't want, creepy crawlies crawling all over. Uh, this works against ticks, chiggers, mites, and mosquitoes. And so what this will do is it will actually kill the bugs. If they land on it, it will kill them. And so I use this for ticks. And so I will spray my socks, my pants, my shirts, my tent, and make sure that I'm keeping the ticks away. And if they do attract to me, they are dying on contact. They're not able to attach to the skin. So this is what I use for ticks. And then DEET is what I use for mosquitoes. Uh, the Sawyer Maxi DEET is the one that I typically goes use the uh, most often. Next is going to be paper, plates, and plastic forks or spoons or whatever you want to use. Uh, I use forks, but the thing with this is it's going to make your trip a lot easier. One of the hardest things to do when you're first getting started is to figure out how to wash your dishes and or your clothes or anything like that. And so having something that you can just throw away is makes life way easier, it's like so much easier. But the thing that you really need to focus on and be concerned with is the campground is going to either allow you to burn your garbage, in which case you need to make sure that you are burning it completely. You're not leaving half a bag of garbage in the fire ring. It needs to be burnt completely down to ash. Or they're going to say, do not burn your garbage at all. It's gonna be forbidden. And then you need to throw it away. You need to respect whatever your campground says to do that is what you need to do because what they're trying to accomplish is they're trying to preserve the environment so that it can be utilized in the exact same manner for 
the rest of eternity. And so if you can do your part and we all do our part, that space will be there for our kids, our great grandkids, our great great grandkids, and every future thereafter. And so make sure that you do what's recommended. Uh, I do recommend bringing them, I do recommend having them, but just make sure you're using them responsibly. The other thing is paper towels, and this again you're going to need to use responsibly. If you can burn them, burn them completely. If it says to throw them away, throw them away. But I like paper towels. One of the worst things is when you have a mess and you take a rag and you clean up that mess and then you have to figure out what to do with that rag. Okay, you don't want to throw it away because you might need it again later. And so you don't want to put it with other things because it'll get all the other things messed up. And so now you have this rag that you really don't know what to do with. Or paper towels eliminate that problem. You clean up your mess, throw it away, and it's just done. And so I really like carrying paper towels. Uh, worst case scenario, you can use it as backup toilet paper. You can use it as backup different things, fire light, if you need help lighting your fire, that's what I was trying to say. Then uh, you can use paper towels for that. There's a lot of uses you can do with paper towels, and so I recommend having them, but again, make sure you're using them responsibly. Uh, next is going to be bags. Now when it comes to bags, there's going to be a variety of different bags you're going to need. Uh, I like carrying just reusable plastic bags. This is a Fleet Farm bag, Walmart bag, Target, whatever you, wherever you go shopping and you get bags, keep them. What this will allow you to do is you can put wet clothes or if you have that rag that you don't know what to do with, you can put it in a bag and separate it from everything. Uh, the other thing is you can separate all your stuff and so you can have your paper plates and silverware and everything in one bag and then you can just grab it and you have it. It's just a good way of organizing your stuff. It's a good way of separating things. It's a good way of storing things. It's a good way of keeping stuff dry. The thing to keep in mind is you're going to need garbage bags. You're going to need bags for wet clothes. You're going to need bags to carry stuff to and from the beach or the pool or wherever you plan on going. Some, some campgrounds, if you're camping at a campground, like a big extravagant campground, they have uh, playgrounds for kids. And so you're going to want a bag to carry snacks and water and all that. Uh, maybe there's day hike trails and so carrying a small little backpack again that you can carry snacks and water and all the things that you might need on that hike carrying different kinds of bags and planning your trip around what you're going to do and then utilizing the bags to make those functions or those plans uh, the most optimal as they can be is really going to make your trip a lot more comfortable and a lot more enjoyable so that you're not carrying a bunch of things to and from. You can just grab a bag. It has everything you need in it. You're not going to forget anything because it's already in the bag and you can go enjoy your activity and then fill it back up and then come back to camp and make sure that you plan on having multiple different bags, not just garbage bags. Uh, next is a first aid kit. I know I'm rushing through these but my last video was really long and I'm trying to shorten this one up a little bit. Uh, first aid kit is going to be my number five. Now you can get pre-made first aid kits like this one. I'll leave a link to it in the description box down below. This is a survive wear. I like this one because everything is labeled. It's really easy to get at everything. One of the things that I recommend is I recommend if you buy something like this to go through it, see exactly what's in it, and then add to it. Just because they say this is what you need doesn't mean it's what you personally need. If you have prescription medications, you're gonna to wanna to add those. If you have uh, band-aids that you prefer, these are usually really cheap junk band-aids, and so you can swap those out. There's gonna be a lot of different things that you can do to enhance a pre-made uh, first aid kit. Or even better, you can just find a container and make your own first aid kit and that way it's catered to the 
things that might happen while you are camping. It's not just a general first aid kit, it's more of a camp specific first aid kit that uh, revolves around the fire and running around in nature. And so keep that in mind. Uh, two things that I highly recommend that you don't overlook is after bite. Uh, when the mosquitoes get real bad and they attack you and you have those really itchy little bites all over, having afterbite that eliminates that itch, it's not going to eliminate it for a very long time, but it does eliminate it some. It just gives you that break. Okay, so like when you are going insane because of your mosquito bites, you can put this afterbite on them, uh, kind of get yourself together, get like time out for a little bit and regroup and recompose yourself and then go after the world again. And so I recommend Afterbite. And then the other thing is this burn relief spray. Uh, I like this for sunburn. <clears throat> also, if you accidentally grab something uh, that was a little bit too close to the fire and you get burnt a little bit, this is nice to spray on. Again, that burn can drive you crazy. So being able to push the pause button or the timeout and getting a break from it so you can get your thoughts back in order. I really like <clears throat> this as well. Next is a chair. So this is the chair. If you've been subscribed to my channel, you've seen this chair a lot. Hey, oh, I already did this part. This is just a cheap uh, Ozark Trail Walmart chair it's nothing special i've had this thing for years and years and years uh, if you take care of it it'll last a long time this one has holes in it because of the embers from the fire landed on it and melted through it but a good chair is really really nice uh, i have smaller more compact chairs that i've spent more money on just because i like having them even when i'm backpacking i like carrying the weight of a chair because I, when I'm at camp, <clears throat> excuse me, having a comfortable place to sit and relax and enjoy myself is worth its weight. And so make sure that you get a chair. Uh, sitting on the logs or sitting on the picnic table that's provided at most campgrounds, you're going to, your back's gonna get sore, your legs are gonna get sore. They're usually weird heights and so you're not used to sitting like that. Uh, the stumps don't have backrests, and so you have nothing to lean back on. Having a chair that you can rely on and sit on and kind of take a nap in sometimes, uh, it's really going to make your trip that much more enjoyable. I highly recommend bringing a camp chair of some kind. Next is going to be beach towels. Make sure you bring dedicated beach towels. Don't bring your big, fluffy, nice towels from home. Uh, get dedicated beach towels or pool towels. The reason for that is because they're gonna get dirty. They're gonna get full of sand and dirt and everything. And your big, fluffy bath towels are gonna hold that sand and dirt forever. You're gonna have 10 pounds of sand in it, it seems like, where these will shed it off a lot better. I like using microfiber towels. Uh, Country Bound is my favorite brand, but these are getting harder and harder and harder to find. Uh, another good brand is Fox Outdoors. I like these a lot as well. Uh, I recently got these Giros. Giros? I don't know, but I'm going to be testing these out and doing a video on these. These look to be the same style as the Country Bound. They just seem to be a little bit easier to find, but I'm going to test them out and do a review on these here in the future, so stay tuned for that. Uh, next is a toilet bag. You're gonna want a bag with toilet paper, uh, deodorant, toothbrush, toothpaste, all the things that you would bring to a hotel, bar of soap. Uh, one of the tricks that I wanted to show you was having a lanyard with bottles. And so this is something that me and Caroline used to use. And so again, if you're in a campground with a shower, you can put this around your neck and then you don't have to worry about forgetting your bottles at the shower or whatever. And you can just have them around your neck, use them. Uh, blue was my shampoo, pink was Caroline's shampoo, white was the conditioner, 
and then black was normal soap. And so it's nice having this. This also unhooks so I can, if me and Caroline were in the, uh, if we were at the beach and you know how they have the showers so you can rinse off the grime and stuff from the lake. I could hand this to her, she could use it real quick and then I could snap it back on and we wouldn't lose it or forget it. The other thing I like about this one is I can, if you can bathe in the lake or stream, you can put it around your neck and then it won't float away. But if you cannot bathe in the lake or the stream, you can wrap this around a branch and then hang it. And then you can bring the water to a location far enough away from the water source and then you have everything and then that can just be your designated shower spot or sponge bath spot or whatever for your trip and so it's nice having this this has saved me a lot I bring these to a hotel when I'm staying in a hotel I'll bring this and then I'll hang this from the uh, shower rod and then I have all the shampoo and stuff that I always use and so that's just a little trick that I learned over time and I wanted to share with you. I'll probably do a dedicated video to that system and toiletries in general as I'm going through this getting started series. Next is going to be a radio or a Bluetooth speaker. Now this one is solar. This is one's really nice. This is an Eton uh, Bluetooth speaker. Uh, it's nice. It's being nice being able to listen to music. This gets louder than a phone and so you can listen to music and you can kind of get distracted from the different sounds of nature that you're not accustomed to hearing. Uh, it drowns out the squirrels, it drowns out the buzzing of the, ant the mosquitoes and the flies and stuff. And so being distracted is really nice and so like I said before if you prepped your phone then you will have music to listen to with this. Or you can bring a radio. So this is a little crank radio. You can crank it up and then you can put batteries in it. Uh, this is a really nice radio as well. But the reason I like a radio over a Bluetooth speaker is because with the radio I can put it on the weather. I can listen for the radio or the I can listen to the radio for music. I can listen for news updates, I can listen to the weather, uh, I can listen for different things. And so if the sky is getting dark, I can put on the weather channel and I can hear if they're predicting rain or if it's going to pass or different things. And so I prefer a radio over a Bluetooth speaker, but to each their own. You don't get to pick your music with a radio, you're stuck with whatever the DJ plays. With this you get a lot more freedom to play your favorite songs, so keep that in mind. Uh, next, number 10 is going to be a fly swatter. And now this is going to be used at nighttime. I don't care what you do, at night there is going to be a fly or a mosquito inside your tent buzzing around driving you nuts. Seems to be the case all the time. There's always that one bug that gets through. And so having a fly swatter makes it a lot easier to eliminate that annoyance and uh, not have to deal with it and so you can sleep a lot better at night. The other thing that I like to carry is a bug assault swatter. Uh, this you put salt in the top here and then you shoot it at the flies or the mosquitoes or whatever and it just makes the process of eliminating those annoyances a lot more fun and so I like this as well. It does work on flies. It works really well on flies actually. So if you want to pick one up and you never knew if it actually worked. Uh, I haven't tried it on mosquitoes yet but it does work with black flies. Uh, and then my bonus. Uh, last video I had a bonus so I figured I'd have a bonus in this one as well. And my bonus item is earplugs. These are uh, Safety Works earplugs. I like the very soft foam earplugs. The softer the better and so you just roll them up, put them in your ear and the reason I like these is I like to wear them at night when I'm sleeping and so these won't fall out. I don't like wearing the muffs because uh, you toss and turn a little bit and they'll fall off. I don't like the hard plastic ones that are hard because if I roll over on my side 
they can hurt where these I can sleep on my side they don't fall out uh, I like the very soft plastic or the soft rubber not rubber but foam earplugs these are my favorite uh, safety works is the brand that I use I've had these for a really really long time I don't use them anymore but I used to use them and it just helps eliminate because there's going to be a lot of bumps in the night. There's going to be a lot of noises you're not used to hearing. There's going to be crickets and grasshoppers driving you nuts sometimes. And so being able to drown those out is going to help you get a good night's sleep. <coughs> Excuse me. And essentially, that is what you are after. When you go camping, the better night's sleep you get, the better next day you're going to have. And so make sure that you focus on eating well because you're going to be burning a lot of calories now running around hiking swimming doing camp activities you're going to burn a lot of calories so make sure that you eat really well and then also make sure that you sleep really well because you're going to be exhausted from swimming and hiking and doing the camp activities you're going to be exhausted and if you can't sleep because of the crickets or the bumps in the night from the squirrels or whatever the nocturnal animals the owls all the things that are happening at night you are going to wake up that next morning miserable you are going to have a horrible experience and so your first few times camping those are your big concerns make sure that you're eating enough to replenish the calories you're burning and make sure that you're getting a very good night's sleep be as comfortable as possible during night so that you can get a good night's sleep wake up well rested and ready to do all those activities again so with that being said make sure to leave any knowledge or questions in that comment section like i said these are the things that are most commonly forgot at home or oversight when it comes to making a camp list and so i'm sure there is something that i forgot leave it in the comment section down below and i cannot wait to see you on my next video